All right. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining. Um, in this session, I'm going to talk a little bit about LLM testing through a very practical lens. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm, I'm Dennis. I lead the machine learning team at, at VoiceFlow, uh, which is focused on conversational AI. Um, I'm also in the LinkedIn studio right now recording a few Gen AI courses. These are going to be five, six, and seven. So um, yeah, it's been a pretty interesting journey uh, exploring LLMs and trying to apply them into a very practical use case. So let, let, let's start with it. Uh, so today, uh, I'm going to show you a quick sneak peek of what this API looks like, and then we'll sort of go through the journey that I've been on uh, trying to figure out how do we help customers test, automate, um, understand their conversational assistance, uh, talking about some sort of interesting points uh, along the way. Let's open up and this uh, with demo first. screen this no I can't okay that's fine so what you have here is the the voice flow interface uh, basically what I'm demoing here is scraping some information from a website in this case Wikipedia and asking some questions so it's a rag based system in this case and I'm trying to test out like how good is the rag system does it get the questions right uh, can I trust it to go into production now, the alternative is to, rather than using the UI, I can use some JSON and a, and a custom spec to actually define these tests uh, more explicitly. So this is quite powerful because I can define test cases, I can define test sets, I can define criteria, uh, and actually go ahead and, and run them. So we'll, we'll pause the teaser here because uh, I don't want to show you all the interesting stuff at the beginning. So. Uh, this journey started uh, back in May once we were releasing our uh, knowledge base, which is the rag based system. And we want to figure out internally, how do we actually test all of this, right? How do we pick the right chunks? How do we pick the right evaluation metrics? How do we parse them? How do we figure out how much time we invest in our web processor versus um, prompting, right? So a lot of interesting questions that we were asking internally kind of in May 2023 and even earlier when sort of large language models were, were taking off. And this was driven very much from a practical perspective that we were building this product. Uh, we wanted to know how to best build it, but we also wanted to help our customers understand how should you use this. So we had all these different LLM or reg based questions, right? Things about chunks, embeddings, vector DBs, the prompts for summarization. Should we use re-ranking or not? Um, which LLM should we use? Is ChatGPT fine? Do we need GPT-4? Should we use Claude? Um, and how much context should we pass in? So a lot of these questions and many more were all the things that were uh, swirling around in our minds. And many of you who were probably using uh, Gen AI for, uh, during that time uh, or earlier were thinking about similar things. Now, this is kind of a, a modern version of this story because in, in practice, uh, for me at least, this journey started back in 2022. Um, we were asking our customers the question of how do you test your assistance before going into production? Um, and most of them said that they, that they don't. Um, so we're like, okay, well, as a conversational AI platform, how, how can we be helpful in this regard? How can we help automate this? So we, we built out a couple of uh, presentations along with videos and little SDKs to go through this. Um, some of the work I did in, in the summer of 2022 is mainly focused on the NLU side of testing. So NLU is natural language understanding, and in the conversational uh, AI world, it was typically used uh, as a short form to refer to intent classification and entity extraction, uh, which are two important things that you need for, for most chatbots. So ended up building out a couple of documents, presentations, tutorials on how to do this testing. And as part of that came a little um, SDK, you'd call it, open source repo, for customers to mock up their, their test cases using uh, utterances, for example, I like a large pizza, and defining the size for, for the entities, um, along with, with the intents as well. So for for this kind of work, uh, we wanted to 
sort of help provide uh, this framework for customers, tell them how to use it, help them define their test cases, and then just have a, a couple of Python commands to run. Now, even though we thought this was an important problem, uh, nobody really used it. We got four GitHub stars. You can probably find the repo still there. Um, but we didn't get the usage we expected, mainly because many of our customers were sort of low-code, uh, no-code users at the time. So from that perspective, we didn't find like a, a product market fit, you can say, or this, uh, this journey wasn't immediately impactful through traditional product metrics uh, or use cases. So we go back to summer 2023, back to our LLM craziness. Um, we started building an LLM testing framework. And this was a framework that we built internally to do all the experimentation I, I mentioned earlier, right? Validating our use cases, validating our uh, bag-based approach, and in general, doing integration tests uh, on our chatbot. And our goal was to generate some, some reports at the end, metrics, uh, figure out which models we should use, which vector DB we should use. Um, this is sort of an er early output format that we use through command line. Sort of, you can see here you have uh, different tests, different prompts, uh, system prompts, uh, LLMs, uh, chunk sizes, et cetera. So our goal was to figure out what's the, the best approach that, that we can take. So as part of that, one of the, the most interesting, I think, challenges was actually defining the schema for, for the tests. So we went through a number of different iterations. Uh, this was V1. It was very simple. Uh, define your document, define your tags, uh, define your transcript and the, the expected results. And we, we had our, our match types, like similarity score, regex, keywords, um, as well as a, as a matching field. And we wanted to include some kind of flags um, or, or tags, which we later changed it to, to understand which test to run. Now, this evolved over time, uh, sort of becoming clearer. And uh, in, one, in 1 1.1, we we tried mimicking the format of the, the LLMs as sort of a user and assistant role. Um, we, we added some model settings. Uh, we decided that one schema should hold multiple document paths, and we changed the name to tags. Oh. All right. And we continued to evolve this forward, sort of keeping this documentation uh, throughout the summer and sort of indicating these design decisions as, as we changed them. Now, roughly at the, the same time, uh, we had been running our, our own NLU, which we've been, we had been building to replace a, a vendor product uh, for the, the past year. And after running it in a beta uh, format and in a shadow mode for, for half a year, we, we released it as a um, replacement for, for all our bots. So as part of that, um, released uh, another open source repository for running the comparative results, um, both on uh, our own NLU for data sets, as well as uh, competing products. So as, as part of that release process, uh, that involved writing a number of different converters between different formats, um, having different types of tests that we can run, and having different types of metrics. The, the interesting thing was, um, based on, on this release, we, we had some questions that were asked of sort of, how do you run this? How do I integrate this? Um, so we came up with, with a few simple examples, including things like, running regression tests between different types of um, versions. So the, the, the win here was that we had a big customer actually using this code to benchmark their NLU and uh, try to figure out uh, what's the best way to improve their project. So that, that, that was a big win. We went from, from zero to one. Um, so, so that was a, a good success story. Now, the, the conclusion we were coming to is that our customers and generally most people don't don't really want to use code samples. Um, like the ML world might be a little bit of an exception where we as developers want to be hands on. But from a business perspective, most people are like, just give me just give me a button to click, just give me a UI, just uh, just even give me an API to use. So that's what we did. We did that's what we did. We built an API um, and we released a version one in November of 2023. Uh, which included um, manual tests. So you'd upload a schema, you'd send it to our API, you'd get a result. Now we did it with a beta group um, and 
people kind of tried it out, but they didn't really adopt it because the feedback was writing each test was a lot of work. It, it took a lot of effort to actually define a test, follow that schema, and, and adopt it. So we went back to some of the experiments we ran earlier in the summer um, about actually automating some of this generation. So this is a little CLI demo. It'll, it'll expand, not really. Uh, what's happening here is that I am running some tests uh, for that Wikipedia page I showed earlier. And skip ahead a little further. I can run these tests. Now, what I wanted to do was actually build uh, an auto uh, test generator from this. So after running it, uh, I'm going to run a another test, but with another flag, this time to sort of auto-generate the questions that I want. Um, so we did that. We did some experiments. Uh, and from that, we realized that ChatGPT uh, 3.5 actually did quite a good job of generating good questions and answer pairs for, for most of the data sets we worked with. So we, we understood that it was possible that with AI, you can automate some of these, um, these test spec generations. Uh, generative models are quite good at this. And then people in general don't like writing manual spec. So we built out the, the API where you can create a test spec, you can run it to get a result, and then you can see it. And going back to this video um, I showed you earlier, let's actually take a look at that. Go to here. So what's going to happen here is that I'm just going to use the knowledge in my knowledge base, in this case, which is uploaded documents. And based on this simple little uh, payload, I'm going to use ChatGPT 3.5 to generate some questions. Um, and then I'm going to generate some automatic answers uh, based on that. So we have some defaults built in. We use a similarity score as the way to calculate correctness, but you could also change the built-ins. So we can go ahead and run that, and we'll indicate that we've generated the spec here. Um, you can see here there's a lot of default values that we use. And we'll start sort of a job to do that. So once that job is complete, you'll be able to see the actual spec. Oh, broke something there. And there you go. You sort of have the, the questions that are being generated here with, with the results. Now, this allowed you to, to be quite creative with your prompts um, rather than just generating uh, generic prompts because LLMs are so easy to prompt. You can be like, I need answers uh, in Italian or in another language or in a certain format, answer like a pirate, et cetera. So, we built out the API. Um, I think the most powerful thing was that we can auto-generate questions and run all the tests in sort of like a, a sub-hour uh, ratio. So with one of the big customers we were working on with this, they had, uh, I think it was over 1,000 documents in the RAGBay system. They made a, a few API calls. They ran through it. And then they were able to see, see the results. So that, that was pretty interesting. Um, people started working on it and, and using it in practice. So going through a little bit more on what the spec looks like, um, in general, our goal is to evaluate the, the responses uh, from a RAG-based solution. But in practice, you, you can use it as an integration test. So if you have a standard NLU or fixed response chatbot, you can just go ahead and uh, run it as normal. And the expectation is that the result that comes back by a statically defined response is, is what you expect it to be. So uh, if we look here, some of the things that, that we use, uh, we use the, the current response and the expected response. Um, sorry, we use the, the question that's being asked, the expected response versus the actual response, and we define a similarity score. So in this case, the Denver Nuggets won and the Miami Heat did not. So we can say that this is a, a failed test. Um, we, we define the match type, which is similarity score, uh, with a match. Um, field of 
And we measure other things like response times, uh, uh, tokens being used for both the, the question, answer, and some validations. And we can define the, the large language model settings. So as part of this, uh, we also included uh, three different checks, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So uh, overall, you have those detailed responses, and you have a summary at the end, which lets you sort of see for a given test, for a certain permutation of LLM vector DB uh, data, what the, what the responses are. So uh, internally, when we were testing this out, uh, we were going through a couple of different uh, iterations. Um, for example, one use case we used personally uh, was looking at cleaning data. So we're using different uh, sort of metrics beyond just accuracy, looking at net, net discount cumulative gain, uh, recall precision, uh, and, and so forth. And as part of that, we had a, a simple question. Um, if we use, uh, I think it's now called semantic chunking or LM-based uh, chunking, is it going to improve the accuracy uh, of our responses? And the answer was yes, but in a few rare cases where the data is super messy. Um, so we decided as a product decision not to go forward with this because it slowed down the ingestion process. It used up a whole bunch of tokens. Uh, and for the average customer, it, it, it wasn't particularly helpful. Now, uh, going back to some of the metrics that we used, you might have noticed that there are two more metrics that, that we defined in the API. So one of them was prompt leaks, and the other one was the, the correct language. So at first, we didn't define these metrics. We just had sort of the accuracy based on the response match or the similarity score. But when you're running millions of prompts through your system, you get some, some weird things. Um, so these were two user complaints. Um, the first one on the left here is that the, the prompt was being leaked. Um, and there's like a weird uh, regurgitation of the uh, like role playing between user and assistant. Um, and this happened very infrequently, maybe like less than 0.01% of prompts. But for certain users, um, it was it was really bad. Um, and it was giving uh, some issues from a, from a business perspective where their customers are like, what is going on? Um, on the right-hand side, we have another one. We had this weird issue where after a few turns in the conversation, the large language model would revert back to English, which was, which was really strange, even though in the instructions it would say, speak Spanish. The instructions were in Spanish, but sometimes it, it would still happen. Uh, especially with with Claude. So we end up implementing these these two custom metrics um, as a way to validate it because that those are the challenges that our customers uh, ran up against. So uh, as we continue working on this API, we're going to keep uh, keep tracking which uh, which values our customers care about, what what issues they ran into, and how we can actually mitigate that. So. Uh, it's interesting because it, it goes against some of the, the typical metrics people people look at, uh, which are much more technical metrics rather than, than business impacting metrics. Now, now to wrap up, um, before I take some questions, um, is everybody using our test API? No, most of our users are still testing by hand. Uh, most of us internally are still testing by hand. Um, we, we do a lot of vibes-based testing, but uh, it's been an interesting journey sort of going through building this API and, and continuing to, to iterate on it. So uh, happy to take some questions now. Um, I'll scroll back into the chat. Um, 